eventually? Yeah, none of your business. Sorry. It's only asking. Good looking sort of bloke, isn't they? But for ladies' man, I'd say. Well, not for long, my sweet. Not for long. I have become involved in a somewhat mysterious plot. Plot? Oh. Dramatic as this may sound. Murder. I presume you'll be defending the accused. That will be rather difficult, Archie. You see, in this particular case, I am the intended victim. How did you come by these letters? I stole them from my wife's lover, of course. How else? Keeps them concealed under a floorboard in his studio like some love-struck youth in a novelette. It's all very intense, you know. The letter says everything, Alastair, everything. They intend to kill me and make it appear a suicide. Betchel, he's dead, Cameron. He shot himself about an hour ago. You are both under arrest for the murder of Martin Betchel. All these letters were written by the same hand, and yet you still deny this to be true. Yes, I do. I do not know how they came by my personal stationery. All I know is I did not write those letters. You've also heard the testimony in which it was confirmed that this plaster impression taken from a flower bed outside the Betchley home matched exactly the shape and size of this shoe. Yes, but I deny that I... I'm sure you do, Mr. Whiting, but all I wish to confirm at the moment is whether or not this shoe is yours. Yes. Yes, it is mine. Do you find the accused at the bar, Terence Andrew Whiting, guilty or not guilty? Guilty. And how say you? Do you find the accused at the bar, Veronica Ann Betchley, guilty or not guilty? Guilty. No. No. You're wrong. We didn't do it. They're guilty as hell. The jury was unanimous in that verdict. I know, I know. And apart from all that, who else had any motive to kill him? I mean, think about it, Alistair. If they didn't do it, who did? Who indeed, Archie? Who indeed? early call. Haven't you seen the morning paper? No, I haven't seen anything this morning, and I don't intend to for another two hours at least. The editorial on page four has all but named you a genius of criminology. I'll read it to you. In what was dismissed by the Toronto police as a straightforward case of suicide. Inspector Cameron... Uh, don't read it to me, Archie. All right. I dare say you'll see it yourself later. Anyhow, in view of all this, I think we should have dinner at the club tonight, Alistair. Well, to celebrate your victory over Inspector Regan, naturally. And don't worry, Alistair, this time it's on me and the expense. You can order whatever you like, uh, uh, within reason, of course. Uh, that's very generous of you, Archie. Well, not at all. After all, you took me the last time, didn't you? I did? Oh, oh yes, the last time. Oh, yes, so I did. Yeah. Very well, I'll make reservations for 7 o'clock. Oh, well, fine. I'll see you there, Archie. Right. All right. Want some more, then? More? Well, no, that depends what you mean, innit? Tea, of course. What do you think I mean? <laughs> Cheeky devil. Will it be long, do you think? What? Before we can go. No, I shouldn't think so. I mean, they've been found guilty now, haven't they? 
Oh, the fuss should die down soon, a couple of days, maybe. I still don't want to appear too anxious, do I? Oh, Charlie, I'm just so excited. It's going to be smashing, isn't it? Me in New York. I can't believe it, really. It's like a dream come true. We're going to have ever such a good time, Charlie, eh? Promise. <laughs> Are you not having anything more, Alistair? Uh, no, thanks, Roger. That's all, thank you. Is anything bothering you? Mm -hmm. No, no, not really. Oh, come, Alistair. My specialty may be with the deceased, but that doesn't mean that I don't know anything about the living. What is it? Oh, nothing serious. Just a sort of misgiving, that's all. Misgiving? About the trial? Are you still having doubts about that? Uh, something's not quite right. My sixth sense is trying to tell me something, but I don't know what. Well, if it's anything significant, I'm sure it will come to you. I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> well, are you uh, ready to go? Aye. As for this evening, Archie, you must let me contribute to the bill. What for? I didn't contribute anything the last time. Uh -huh. I have a confession to make about that. Confession? Yes, well, I... To tell you the truth, I didn't really pay for the dinner that evening. You didn't pay? <coughs> Alistair, you're not telling me that... Of course not. I'm <coughs> silly. Well, well, who did? An anonymous admirer. Yes. I found a small typewritten card in my message slot. An appreciation for services rendered. And ten dollars. Ten dollars? Good God. Why didn't you tell me then? What difference would that have made? Well, I wouldn't have read the menu from right to left for a start. And in the end, I wouldn't have had anything left of my ten dollars, you greedy old goat. <laughs> I presume we are going fishing again this weekend, Alistair? No, I can't. I'm catching an early morning train to... Mr. Charles Vipond. Yeah. You're quite right, Mr. Vipond. The instructions are to release this item to you upon proof of your identification. Only... Well, only what, Mr. Porter? I have provided sufficient identification, have I not? Oh, your identification is perfectly in order. That's not the issue here. Oh, well, what is it then? The issue is that I am bound by my anonymous client's instructions to release this package to you only after the death. Oh, of yes, I know about that. Uh, you see, the contents are articles pertaining to a journal. We've, uh... Oh, well, we've been receiving chapters by installment for some time now in preparation of a biography. Well, as is often the case, the author wished these final pages to be withheld until after death. That's precisely the point I'm trying to make. Strange as it seems, the instructions as written here are for me to release this item only after the death of Mrs. Veronica Batchelay. Veronica Batchelay? That's correct. Unless I'm greatly in error, the said party is still alive, albeit for a limited period. So, I'm afraid that until that unfortunate lady's execution, I must obey the proviso as it stands. I'm sorry. Like this. Oh, don't be stupid. There's no possible way they can link me with this. Can't we just leave it and go to New York? Let's just forget about it and get out of here, Charlie, eh? Forget it? Look, in case you don't know, there's a thousand quid in that envelope. It's the third and final payment. It's mine and I want it. And all we have to do is sit tight and wait for the execution. Just one more week, that's all. One week? What's in the room is right now? I told you to be like this, but you insisted on coming. Yeah, but I thought we was going to New York, didn't I? I didn't know I was going to be locked up in this bleeding place all 
all right, but we're going to bloody New York, you stupid cow. Now, just shut up about it. Yeah, when? When I'm ready. That's when and not until. Have you got that? When I'm ready. Mrs. Lutz. Would you please be serious, Inspector? He's here right now. I had to put him in the parlor. Well, who is he? His name is Finch. Finch? Yeah. He says he has some urgent information about some letters or something. Letters, eh? Uh, would you make us some coffee, Mrs. Lutz? Uh, by the way, what's that? Uh, I am not sure, Inspector. It arrived yesterday. <laughs> well, don't just stand there. The coffee, Mrs. Lutz. The coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hi, good morning, Finch. Oh, good morning, Inspector. How have you been keeping, eh? Well, what's this about letters, eh? Well, well that's just it, sir. I, I'm not quite sure. It's just when I read about Mrs. Betsley's testimony in the newspaper, I mean about her insistence that some of those letters were not written by her, it set me thinking. Well, thinking about what, Finch? Well, this is probably very silly, sir, I know, but uh, my first post as a butler was with Mr. Betsley's parents. Uh, Master Martin was only a lad then, but it was always expected that he would follow in his father's footsteps and take over the family business. He had the gift, you see, sir. I remember his father boasting that even as an apprentice, he was brilliant. Now, uh, the gift of what, Prince? Do sit down. Uh, well, I'm, I'm getting to that, sir. Master Martin's mother died, and Mr. Betsley Sr. married a younger woman. After that, it was dreadful. Master Martin couldn't get on with his father anymore. They fought all the time. Uh, finally, he gave up the family trade and moved to Toronto to study uh, law. You forgive my impatience, Finch, but what on earth are you getting at, ma'am? Well, just that, don't you see, sir? For five generations, the Betsleys have all been master engravers. All this reminded me of an amusing story Mr. Betsley Sr. used to tell about uh, Master Martin copying his father's handwriting uh, for letters to the school principal, things like that, sir. What you're saying is that Martin Betsley forged his wife's love letters, is that it? Well, God forgive me, sir, no. I wouldn't want to create trouble for anyone. It's just that the memory of these uh, no, things... No, 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 don't worry about that, French. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Lutz. That'll be all. Why didn't you bring me this information sooner? Well, I wasn't in court on that day, you see, sir. And as I said, I knew nothing about this letter business until I read about it in the newspaper. I tried to call you then, but you'd already left for Kingston. Uh, I see. Sugar? Two? Mm -hmm. uh, that's not all. There's something else that's been worrying me, Inspector. Oh, what's that? Well, there was that evening, about a week before the master's death, when I was given a letter which the footman had found. Uh, the fact is, he was pressing the master's grey pinstripe. He always wore the grey pinstripe of a uh, Tuesday. Yeah, 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 sir. Go on, Trench. Uh, well, as I say, the footman found the letter in the master's breast pocket. And he gave it to you? That's right, he did, sir. It was all sealed and ready to send off. Naturally, I just presumed it was a business letter which the master had forgotten to post. Business letter? Why a business letter, particularly? Uh, because the envelope had been addressed on a typewriting machine, sir. Ah, see. Now, go on. Well, I brought the letter to Mr. Betsley's attention and asked him if he wished me to post it for him. Mm -hmm. He suddenly snatched the letter out of my hand and told me he would post it himself. His reaction seemed rather strange, really. Can you recall to whom the letter was addressed? Yes, indeed, I can, sir. You see, that was the most curious part of it all. The letter was addressed to Mrs. Betterly's sister, sir, Mrs. Catherine Emerson. Why should I answer your question, Inspector Cameron? Because this investigation could result in your sister being granted a retrial. Now, did you or did you not receive a letter from Martin Betterly? No, Inspector, I did not. My brother-in-law never wrote a letter to me in his life liked me intensely. He didn't even bother to send me a Christmas card, much less a letter. You're certain of that? Yes, absolutely, sir. Well, it's Inspector. very strange, because a member of the Betcherley staff said they found a typewritten letter in Betcherley's pocket addressed to you a week before he died. Well, I can assure you, I never received it. 
Well, there was a typewritten envelope which arrived about that time, but it wasn't a letter. In fact, it didn't contain any message whatsoever. What did it contain? Two very expensive tickets for a fellow at the Royal Alexandra Theatre. I assume from a member of one of the committees I sit on. What night were they for? Well, they were for that Thursday evening's performance. The night Martin died. Mrs. Lutz! Mrs. Lutz! Where are you, woman? Inspector, my goodness, what is it? A man. Uh, you told him I was at the club. He telephoned, remember? You were indiscreet. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember. Yes. I was worried because... Well, I never mind about that. Did he have a deep, resonant voice? Well, did he or didn't well, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, I think so. Oh, yeah, and very clear. He spoke a little bit like you do, Inspector. You uh, know, what is it they call us now? Uh, good enunciation. Uh, well, that's good enough, Mrs. Lux. Thank you. Oh, get that damn thing out of here. Yes, it's there. But where are you going? I've got your dinner already. Then you eat it. Well, I have eaten mine. Then give it to the cat. We don't have a cat. <laughs> Change the lock. Never mind, as they say, where there's a will, there's a way. Here, hold this. What are you doing? I'm taking off my boot. What does it look as if I were doing? Whatever for? I need to sit down and rest my feet for a while. Really, aren't you? Sometimes you ask the most banal questions. Stand back. What are you going to do? This. Isn't this what's described as breaking and entering? No. That was breaking. This. Is entering after you. Oh! What is it, Archie? Where's that lantern? There's packing cases all over the place. Oh, well, I'll have to watch for a step then. Here, use the typewriter. Oh, well, put it on the table. Ah. Yeah, now we'll need some paper. I wonder if they. Oh, there we are. Ah, just the very thing, the very thing. Ah. Right. Look at that tea. You see it? See what? Well, it's it's slightly fractured in the middle. Huh? Mm. It's identical with that one on the card. Mm. It was bitterly that sent that card to the club along with the ten dollars. But all that proves is that he knew we were going to be there. Why, why did he pretend to be surprised to see us, eh? And why did he have to get us there on that particular night? Are you sure this sixth sense of yours isn't? Run amok. Oh, never mind about that. Just listen. First of all, he arranges dinner for us at the club. All right, he seems to know, or at least assumes that we're going to be there. But just to make sure, he calls Mrs. Lutz, but doesn't leave his name, naturally. Then he bumps into us. A mere chance encounter, at least that's what he wants us to think. Then he introduces his theory about his life being in jeopardy. Invites us home for a nightcap. Uh, he knew his wife would be out, you know? Thursday night. Then he shows us the letters which he's previously forged. Uh, just a hint of menace. Not enough to incriminate Veronica and Whiting with threatening his life. That would be too easy, too soon. No, he wanted them to hang for his murder. But he wasn't ready to die, not quite yet. That's where your theory breaks down, Alistair. Why would a man commit suicide just to avenge himself on his unfaithful wife? I mean, what sort of vengeance is that? Uh, you're right, Master. Doesn't make sense, does it? Not in the least. Uh, but if I have any ideas, I'll let you know. Oh, come to breakfast and tell me what they are. Thank you, Alistair. I will. Oh, uh, there must be an answer to all this, Archie. Even the night of his death fits the pattern exactly. That was a Thursday, too, wasn't it? Aye, the two lovers will be alone at the sister's house. 
That's why he sent Catherine Emerson these theater tickets. With her out of the way, Veronica and Whiting would only have each other as alibi. Which was tantamount to having no alibi at all. Pass them on, Larry, please. So, if what you suspect is true, then all the other evidence was part of his plan, too. How do you mean? Uh, do you want some money? Uh, well, getting Veronica Betchelay to do all those things that he knew would place her under the greatest possible suspicion. Mm. Like dismissing the staff on the night of his death. A more tea? Aye. To say nothing of the barbiton, getting her to ask for the prescription, his own doctor being conveniently away in Europe for several weeks. Uh, you don't suppose that the doctor's absence was prearranged too, do you? Mm, I'm sure he planned all this for a time when he knew the doctor was going to be on a bit. Good heavens, Archie. I'm sure you're right. Well, I usually am. About what? Come on. Where are we going now? I'll tell you on the way. Come on. Archie! Alistair, I'm sure you have a perfectly justifiable reason for going where we're going, but do you have to walk so fast? We're going to Dr. Gillis. For what possible purpose? Archie, my dear fella, you gave me the answer yourself. I did? Would you care to give it back to me? You said a man does not commit suicide just to avenge himself on his unfaithful wife, and you're quite right, except in one particular instance. Which is? Which is that the man knows he is only a short time to live. And you think Dr. Gillies would have known about it, but Dr. Gillies is in Europe, remember? Dr. Gillies may be in Europe, but his medical records are not. Come on. What time do you make it? Uh, 9.20. Right. Find a telephone somewhere. Call this number in five minutes' time. But, Alastair, what will I say to them? Don't be a ridiculous man. Since when were you ever at a loss for words, eh? <laughs> May I help you? Uh, Dr. Gillis? Dr. Gillis is away in Europe. I've been instructed to refer his patients to Dr. Berger down the street. He's at number 73. Uh, I, I hadn't come to see him professionally. Uh, my name is Inspector Cameron. Have you any identification? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, may I come in, please? Oh, thank you very much. I came to see Dr. Gillies about uh, Martin Betcherley. Martin Betcherley? But, uh, surely you know Martin Betcherley was murdered. <laughs> I'm only too well aware of that fact, Miss, uh... Ullman. Big pardon? Ullman. Ullman. Uh, what a very nice name. <laughs> yeah, well, <clears throat> because of certain new evidence that has come to light, it has become necessary for me to know something of Martin Betchelay's medical history. Now, if I could just take a quick look oh, at the I doctor's... Oh, I wouldn't allow you to do that. Not without Dr. Gillis' permission or special written request from the proper authorities. Uh, yes, Inspector. I understand your position, but in this instance, I Not should... in any instance, Inspector Cameron. A patient's medical files are highly confidential. It would be contrary to professional code. Oh. I'm sorry. Could you excuse me uh, a moment? Certainly. Go ahead. Dr. Gillis, surgery. Who? Papadopoulos. No, I'm afraid the doctor's still away. He should be back in two more weeks. May I give him a message? Yes. Yes, I see. Uh, oh, very well, uh, Mr. Papadopoulos. I'll tell him as soon as he returns. Goodbye. Sorry about that, Inspector. Another dead end. Blank sheets of paper. Uh, we should have known better they would never leave anything so important undone. It does tell us something, though. Oh. You don't destroy your medical history without good reason. Surely that proves your theory about his impending death. It proves nothing, Archie. We have nothing the Premier could use to persuade the Governor-General to order a stay of execution. We haven't a single scrap of evidence to support our story. Yeah. Except perhaps... Except what? Eh? Come on. Where are we going now? That chemist in King Street, and nothing else we can satisfy ourselves about that. Mrs. Lutz! Mrs. 
says nuts. Are you calling me, Inspector? Yes, I'm calling you. Get your coat, woman, and come on down here. My coat? Yes, your coat, and hurry it up. I haven't got all day. Ah, oh. oh, yes, here it is. Betchelay. Prescription issued June 17th. Three more in July, several more in August, and another one in September. Tell me what they wear, the medications, I mean. No, Doc. I'm afraid that would be quite impossible. Unless, of course, we had the permission of Dr. Kelly's himself in writing. All right. All right, Mrs. Lutz. Can you go? I mean, what will I say? Uh, anything, anything, woman. It just engages attention for a few minutes. Buy something. Buy what? Buy anything that lacks it. Ah, I have a customer. Will you excuse me for a moment? Oh, yes, 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 please. Go right ahead. Yes, madam. May I be of assistance? Yes. Um, I want to buy a, um, a laxative, if you have any. Well, yes, madam, we most certainly do. Any one in particular? Yeah, yes, it's for my employer. No, no, I meant any one particular product that you want. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, I mean, uh, what is the difference? I mean, they all do the same thing, don't they? Well, to a greater or lesser degree, madam, yes. It all depends on the strength of the medication. Oh, I see the strength of the medication. Oh, well, in this case, I will have a box of the Kramer. Kramer's? Yes, that will be fine. Thank you. You'll just wait here a moment, madam. Very straight. Oh, my, it's, it's a talus. Total hydrate capsules. It was undoubtedly as hard, talus, but everything points to it. Why couldn't you tell me all that after the autopsy, man? No, you, you asked me to inspect his stomach, Alice, that not this hard. And in any event, I would only have found the bar, but well, there was no trace of any of these drugs. Mm, I dare say to make sure even of that. Well, at least we've determined that Petchley was a very sick man. That's not sufficient evidence. We need something more substantial than that. The one thing you haven't explained is how Petchley managed to plant the evidence. I mean, the footprints and all the things you found in Whiting's studio. Well, he could have planted them himself before his death. No, no. Petchley was too meticulous for that. He would never have taken a chance like that. Huh? It would undo everything. Well. If it had been discovered before his death, it would have been far too great a risk to take, don't you see? No. There was somebody else involved. An accomplice? Uh, an accomplice. Someone without personal interest or motivation. In other words, a purely business arrangement. You mean a hired assassin? Ah. Uh. Good God, do you really think that? Well, what now? Well, we'll drop Mrs. Lutz off first. Then we'll go to the premium. Then to the premium? Well, oh, there's nothing else for it, Archie. Oh, what good will that do? You said yourself. I know, I know. But considering what we'll find out, we must try, Archie. We must try. Hey, Cap! Realize, Inspector, the repercussions this could have? It certainly won't be very popular with the public. Even less so with the authorities. I know that, sir. Especially considering that my decision would be based purely on your supposition. I realize what an imposition this is, Premier. But surely you must know that I would never ask for you to have a word with the Governor General if I didn't think that I was almost certain I could find something which will, if nothing else, give us a valid reason to ask for a retrial. Besides, if the execution takes place as scheduled and we discover that the parties in question are innocent, the repercussions would be more than unpopular. They would be disastrous, especially in the light of the forthcoming elections. This is not the time for an error, is it, sir? Very well, Cameron. I'll see the Governor General. I'm sorry. The most I can ask for is 24 hours. Ah, thank you, Premier. Thank you. Well, he'll get us 24 hours. 24 hours? Is that all? That's all. Come on.
faint idea of a few minutes, I must say. So? I got tied up. Well, just what the hell do you think you're doing? Packing's what? Did you see the morning paper? Got to get out of your trolley while the going's good. So they've been given another 24 hours. So what? It's only another day. Oh, yeah. One day too many, if you ask me. I don't like a trolley. What if they find out the truth when she gets off? What then, eh? She won't. What she does, though. Can't stay around forever to find out now, can we? Oh, of course not. Oh, no, no death, no final payment. In that case, we simply leave without it. All we got to do is wait another day to find out. Are you off your head, Charlie? That Cameron bloke suspects something. I know it. He's dangerous staying here a minute longer. Oh, don't be daft. He doesn't know anything about me. How could he? I don't know, Charlie, but I'm right scared. Oh, don't be absurd. Look, I already told you. Oh, so look, all right. All right, so it means waiting around another day. Look, I don't like it any more than you do. But I'm not leaving without that thousand quid. It's mine and I'm entitled. Will you put that thing down and listen to me? No, you listen to me. I'm fed up being a prisoner stuck in this bleeding room day in and day out. I'm fed up to be back to you. Well, it was you who begged to come, you silly tart. Yeah, because that's because I thought we was going to New York, didn't I? Well, that's where I am going in right now. If you want to hang around here, that's up to you. But I've a right to leave if I want to. I'll meet you in New York when you get them, that's all. <gasps> you bastard, you... <laughs> Where are the tickets? My... Where are they? In my purse. You're very generous with my money, aren't you? Like I said, Bella, we go when I'm ready, and not until. That was our little agreement, remember? Now clean this place up, you slut. I don't want you here, Catherine. I told the governor I would see no one. I'm your sister, Veronica. Not even you. Please. Please, go away. Don't you see I had to come? I had to see you once more before... Someone sent you, didn't they? What do you mean? Cam. He arranged this with the governor. No, why should he? You're always a poor liar, Cam. Veronica, my dearest, you don't understand. Inspector Cameron is trying to help us. <gasps> if you knew what he went through to get special permission for me to come here and talk to you. All right. What's his message? He wants to ask you a few more questions. No, 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 I will not talk to him. Not now, not ever. Please, Veronica, I beg of you, please, you must talk to him. Why should I? He now believes you and Terence are innocent. I don't understand. He put the noose around our necks. Who is the new suspect? He believes Martin arranged his own death, Veronica. I know it sounds incredible, but I can see no other explanation. My God, how he must have hated me. Now, I have precisely one day in which to try and save you and Terence fighting from the fate your husband intended for you. You will not save us, Inspector. Don't you see? If what you have just told me is true, I'm sure Martin has destroyed every single trace of evidence. All but one, Mrs. Betterly. The identity of his accomplice. Now, I want you to think and try to recall if your husband had any dealings with anyone you consider suspicious. Well, he'd never make a mistake like that. He conducted all his business from the office. Well, a, a letter, a visit, a telephone conversation, a withdrawal of a large sum of money from a bank. Anything, anything. Anything at all, yes? Well, weeks ago, there, 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 wa there was a telephone call which I found strange. Strange? What way strange? It's from a bank. Bank? Apparently, Martin arranged with this bank to convert several thousands of dollars into pounds sterling, and then the bank manager mentioned a, a safety deposit box in Martin's name. Safety deposit box, I see. Uh, where did Martin bank? Well, we both banked at the Royal, but you see, Inspector, this is not the bank which telephoned. Oh, no? This was a Dominion bank. Well, did you inquire which branch? It didn't occur to me. <laughs> did you ask your husband about this box? Uh, that very evening, he became instantly dismissive and almost angry. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Betchery, did your husband ever complain of chest pains, heart trouble? No. Not that I know of. I see. Oh, thank you. The Dominion Bank in Jarvis Street. Thank you, Regan. I appreciate your help. Why is Regan cooperating with you, of all people? 
Uh, now he knows my suspicions, he's developed a morbid curiosity. Like a circus crowd watching a lion tamer. Lion tamer? Ah, he can't wait to see me being eaten up. Why do you think he took so long to find out the information about the bank? At any rate, without a warrant to open the safety deposit box, it's of no use whatsoever. I dare say even if we did have a warrant, you'd find it empty. More than likely, I have no doubt. Can't you go to the premier again? Surely he can insist on a warrant. He could if we had some proper evidence, but we haven't. Well, we've got to do something. We have precisely eight hours until the execution. Is that all? Oh, I had quite forgotten that. Gee, damn it, ma'am! Haven't I got problems enough without you emphasizing the obvious? Yeah, we... What is it you want, woman? Well, I'm only bringing in the coffee, Inspector. You don't have to bite my head. I'm sorry, Mrs. Lutz. You too, Archie. <laughs> this thing's getting the better of me. My patience, too, I'm afraid. Oh, by the way, Inspector, uh, I put that thing in the box room. I hope you don't mind. Oh, no, fine, Mr. Yeah. Fine. Uh, what thing? Uh, is that big parcel, Inspector? Oh, yes. Yeah. By the way, what was in it? Well, I don't know, Inspector. It was addressed to you. I mean, you don't think that I would open it, do you? Oh, no, no, of course not, Mrs. Lutz. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Uh, rest to me. Wait a minute, Archie. No, no, Archie, it's not. It's the portrait of Martin Betcherley. Or at least it might as well be. What are you saying? It's him. <sighs> He's leering at me. Goading me from the grave. Forgive me, but I still don't know what you're talking about. Now about Betcherley, don't you see? He wants me to know that my instincts are correct. That's why he sent the blasted portrait to me. He wants me to know. Are you suggesting that he actually planned that you should discover the truth? Uh -huh, he did. But only at a time when he knew I'd be powerless to do anything about it. But I still don't understand. He always maintained that you could devise, given the right set of circumstances, the perfect murder. Just as you devise a strategic move in chess. And he's used me to prove his argument. He's manipulated me like a pawn. Yes, he's foreseen my every move with deadly accuracy. Are you serious about this? On a cunning and devious mind he had. I said he had an accomplice. I was wrong. He had two. One unknown and me. I'm well, supposing all this is true. What do we look for now? The only thing left to look for, Archie, Martin Bitchley's vanity. Really? Where do we look for that? In that damn safety deposit box. It's got to be in there. Warrant or no warrant, we're going to find out what's in it. Come on. But it's almost one o'clock. Come on. I hope you're right. That's all. Uh, of course I'm right. Eventually, would never go to his grave without pushing his final achievement down my stupid gullible throat. But why would he take such an unnecessary risk? Because he's too arrogant not to declare his final victory over me. <laughs> this will be his grand finale. Too great a prize for him to resist. Well, Inspector, I sympathize with you, and I realize what a dilemma it must be, but I'm afraid without a court order, it's but quite I've impossible. I've already explained all that. They won't issue me with an order. The parties in question have been tried and sentenced. The only scrap of evidence that could prove their innocence is locked up in that damn vault of yours. Why do you think you were instructed to deliver the contents of the box only after the death of Betterly and his wife? Inspector, what you're asking me to do is unethical and illegal. Farmer, at this particular point, I don't give a tinker's damn about ethics and legalities. If you don't open that box, you and you alone will be responsible for the death of two innocent people who are six hours from the gallows. Oh, well, what's he got to lose? If there's nothing in that box with my name on it, well, forget the whole thing. All I'm asking you to do is to look. Surely you could do that much. Wait here a moment, please, gentlemen. I'll get dressed. He was right. 
to be personally delivered to Inspector Alistair Cameron upon the death of my wife, Veronica Betcherly. Oh, no, I don't believe this. What is it? Well, it's certainly not a confession, Archie. Some kind of cryptic message, that's all. Other of his devious clues. Listen, my dear Cameron, now that uh, my loving and devoted wife is no longer living, it is my opinion that you deserve to and have every right to know the truth. The answer you seek, you already possess. You'll find it look not to art, but rather to craft, for the answers, like the circumstances around in my death, lie not in false images of beauty and innocence, but in that finite framework which, as in life and nature, form the boundaries of reality, huh? Yes, yes, uh, mm. What do you suppose all that means? Like the circumstances around my death lie not in false images of beauty and innocence. My God. He's referring to the portrait. That's got to be it. Uh, uh, lie not in false images of beauty and innocence, but in that final framework which has in framework. life and nature... It's in the frame, Alistair. Look not to art, but to craft. A pause! It's got nothing to do with the damn painting at all! Is it, Archie? Yes, he had an accomplice. All he had to do was kill me and then put the gun into my hand. <laughs> this is it, Archie. The whole story in his own handwriting and signed. We've done it. You We've done, done the devious sign. <laughs> Where are you going? To the premier, of course. Get on the telephone and insist on speaking to him and him only. Tell him I have conclusive proof that Martin Betcherley was responsible for his own death. And hurry up, man. We've only a little time to stop the execution. Having described the more obvious details of my plot, let me dwell briefly on the one final aspect of this perfect crime, which must, I'm sure, be the cause of your greatest curiosity and interest, and how I managed to achieve the strategic placement of clues where I knew you would find them. The answer to that, Alistair, paradoxically, is as simple as it is complicated. It required an accomplice. Someone in whom I could place total trust to carry out his services with utmost efficiency. Needless to, Needless say, to say, he would be a total stranger. A professional whose participation could never be detected after my death. It was relatively simple. The footprints in the flower bed, using the shoes which I had previously taken from Whiting's park. Broken urn, an obvious sign of a quick getaway, except my associate did it before he executed me. Having been supplied with a duplicate key to the doors leading to the terrace, he had only to wait until the drug which I had mixed into my coffee had taken effect. Forgive what must appear 
as mocking presumption to offer you posthumously my sincere congratulations for what I know in advance will be a brilliant and faultless investigation, an investigation which ironically has served to verify that which I have always maintained to be possible, the perfect murder. Check and mate. Yours faithfully in life and death, Martin Fletcher. Check and mate. Yes, well, I could forgive him his victory, and I'm damned if I'll accept his arrogance. Victory? How can you consider it a victory? After all, he failed. He did? Well, of course. His one and only objective was to have his wife and Terence Whiting hang for murder. Thanks to you, they're both alive and free. That's true. But Betcherley's assassin is also alive and free. Remember that? <laughs> yes, and I have little chance of finding out who that was. In that sense, Archie, I've lost. Not if you consider the poetic justice of it, Alistair. Poetic justice, what you mean? Well, after all, Betcherley was responsible for his own murder, and the two people he tried to destroy are free to live a happy and fruitful existence on her vast inheritance. Yeah, that's true. Come to think of it, it's curious that he did leave everything to her. He could have disinherited her. I had to remain the devoted and loving husband to the bitter end, <laughs> unjustly wronged by his unfaithful wife. Hmm? This is outrageous. Three dollars and forty cents. But much more than that the last time, and it only cost two seventy-five. And that included the tip. Waiter, I want with you a moment, eh? Like even the wolf at my top. Then why are we whispering? <laughs> 